Well, good morning, class. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. How many are glad that his mercies are new this morning? Are you guys glad? Yeah, me too. God's good, isn't he? Well, let's stand as we start this class. And I want to ask John Ray, would you just open us up with the word of prayer, please? Just invite the Holy Spirit to come and be our teacher. Yes, Lord, thank you for this day. Yes, God. Lord, even despite of, of the challenges and uh, the things that we go through mm -hmm. yesterday, we were able to to overcome it, and actually we were victorious. Thank you, Lord, for the strength mm -hmm. that you have given. Yes. We give you all mm -hmm. the glory, Lord, because you deserve it. And mm -hmm. today, Lord, we ask that you will just bless each hearer's heart, Lord, that we will yes, God. And, and receive mm -hmm. your word wholeheartedly. Apply it in our lives as well. Yes. Lord, we pray that you will bless Mr. Barton as he will teach us, mm -hmm. guide him, and, and just equip him, Lord, with your grace and help. Yes. Yes. Lord, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Go ahead and have a seat. Well, I've written, as you can see, a question on the whiteboard here, and it really is a age-old question that's been asked by thousands and hundreds of thousands of people throughout the centuries. Uh, it's the, as you can see, it's the question, why was I born? Why was I born? Another way you could say this is, uh, what is my purpose in life? And I would just open up with this question this morning, written on the whiteboard to ask you, uh, have you ever asked, asked yourself that question? Has that been a question that's kind of been in your mind or in your heart? John Ray, you have? Why was I born? Emmanuel, all of you? Yeah, I, I believe that would be true. I've asked it myself, um, you know, even after I became born again, I really began to inquire the Lord, Lord, really, what do you have for me? And why did you place me in this earth? Why was I born? And so as this question is very common to man, there is an answer for this. It's a very large topic and we won't answer it in its entirety in this class today. But we are going to receive help in answering this question by looking at one of the most significant events in history that has ever happened. Now, when I say significant events in history, uh, where does your mind go when I say that? Significant events in history. Okay. And in the Bible, what happened in the Bible, the significant events that happened throughout the Old Testament, there were some major ones. Okay. The crossing of the, the Red Sea, all that kind of stuff. And then we come to the New Testament. And what do we see happening there? How does it open up? Okay, Jesus' birth. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. To answer this question, why was I born? We're going to look at why was Jesus born? Okay, we're going to take a, a closer look into Jesus' life through a couple of passages. Uh, looking at his birth. You know, many uh, people would say that the most significant event that has ever happened in history is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How many are glad that Jesus came and died on the cross? Amen. And he rose again. And again, uh, he's not in that tomb anymore. I've been there in Israel and that cave, that tomb that they think where he was buried. There's more than one spot, but it is empty. And so I'm very glad and grateful that he rose again, too. But equally important, we understand that he couldn't have lived a life and died on the cross and arisen again and if he hadn't been born is that true okay so we're going to look at his birth and answering this question why was i born so let's turn to john 3 16 let's turn together and we're going to read this together and it's it's very uh the reason i want us to read it together is some this is such a familiar this is probably the most familiar passage in the world everybody has it memorized and if you're like me many times uh, a, a scripture can lose its significance uh, because I know it's, it's so familiar. And so I want us to read it together, even though we can, we've got it memorized. Let's read what the Word of God says this morning. I know we have different translations, but let's read this together, okay? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's read it one more time. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise God for that. 
We love it that, that God loves us that much. And for God so loved the world, and that really is speaking of who? Us, right? You and I. It, it is the world, but it's all of us. And so God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. He gave. And let's look at what this giving was. This giving was Jesus, okay, Emmanuel, this giving was Jesus laying down heaven. It was Jesus lowering himself and stooping down and bending low. It was the wonder known as the incarnation. It was Jesus taking the form and clothing himself in a human body. This is much, much more than just a wonderful Christmas story. Amen? Amen. Here it is coming up on October, so Christmas is right around the corner. And I love decorating my house. I love Christmas. But even more than just a, a fuzzy Christmas story, this is one of the phenomenal, most phenomenal things that's ever happened in all of history. That the God of the universe, that Jesus Christ, that one member of the Godhead would leave heaven. There was no pain there. There was no suffering there. There was no human body to, to deal with. And Jesus lowered himself and stooped down and, and became low. Uh, to, to, to serve us and because as it says here because the Father loved us and again we're grateful for that amen that he loved us so much that Jesus and what this really reveals is Jesus' amazing servant, servant's heart I want to share a story with you that years ago uh, I experienced uh, with my son we were sitting in my living room and oh this was 25 years ago and we were watching an old TV show called ALF. Now ALF, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of ALF, but ALF stands for alien life form. And this was a little three foot stuffed animal looking creature and he was an ant eater and somehow his spaceship crashed to earth and he lived with this family. And as he lived with this family, it was just a 30 minute comedy show and it was funny and my little kids liked it. So I got my son sitting on my lap and Alf, ironically, had an ant farm, okay, as his pet. He had one of them ant farms, and he, an ant eater, get that, okay? He's an ant eater, and he's got this ant farm. And, and as the show goes along, we see that this, this, uh, 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 these ants became sick, okay? And they, they began to die, and there was nothing that Alf could do about that. And so, uh, Alf makes this statement, I'm holding my son on my lap, and it's just a show, I, I get that, but God can speak through all kinds of things, okay, and show you things, and, and here's what Alf said. He loved these ants so much that he said, oh, I would do anything to save you. If I could become an ant, I would become an ant, become like you, so I could come down into your little ant farm and figure out why you're dying and why you're sick. Okay, he loved him that much. This ant eater was willing to become an ant. And in that moment while I was holding my son, my heart was really moved and stirred by the Holy Spirit because I was reminded of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, of laying down heaven, of giving up heaven and coming down for us. Now, I know an ant becoming or an ant uh, eater becoming an ant doesn't compare to what Jesus did. Jesus' sacrifice and Jesus' lowering of himself was a, a trillion times greater and more than that. But in that moment, my heart was so moved and my, I even was emotional because I really even more understood the sacrifice, the great sacrifice that Jesus paid for us on that day. And what a tremendous thing. And so that's what we're, what we're wanting to look at here is this sacrifice uh, that our Savior and this servant, Jesus Christ, paid for us. There's another passage, okay, if you'll turn with me in your Bibles. There's another passage I believe that will help us see and further grasp a hold of this servant heart that Jesus Christ has and the significance of what's known as, again, the incarnation, this, this season that we celebrate at Christmas. So turn with me to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. And Megan, if you're there, why don't you go ahead and as soon as everybody else is there, let's read that. Okay, go ahead. Being born in the likeness of men and being 
being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Wow, what an amazing passage. Again, this further reveals in his revelation of what Jesus Christ did when he laid down heaven and came to earth. And this gives us, in this passage, we see that as disciples, how many disciples do we have in here today? Okay. Are we all disciples? Yes, guys, are we disciples? I'm seeing nods. Okay. So as disciples, we are to possess, the Bible says here that we're to possess the same what? What did it say? Have this same attitude. Okay. Have this same attitude that Jesus had. That is the, the command that we see here. Have this same attitude that Jesus had when he laid down, question, when he laid down heaven. When he emptied himself and was made in the likeness of men. So this is what we're going to talk about. So first, before we talk about this attitude, I would ask, what do you see in this passage? It's three script, four scriptures, five, six, seven, and eight. What do you see in this passage was the goal of Jesus' coming? What do you see at the, uh, in here at the very end? Does, does it uh, speak to as to why Jesus laid down heaven? Anybody? Why did Jesus come to earth? To die on the cross. Yes. Amen. That was the goal. His goal was the cross. He knew that. His goal was reconciliation. He knew that. Jesus was born. Jesus lived a perfect life. How many are glad for that? Jesus lived a perfect life so that we could be re reconciled to the Father. He was born. He lived and he died. Okay. But he had to be born first. Again, as we look at this, what a servant's heart. Now, to accomplish this, this coming and laying down his life, again, the scripture states that Jesus possessed a certain attitude. And so I would ask another question here. You guys ready for another question? Okay, I'd ask you another question. How, when you hear the word, when you first hear the word attitude, okay, and I know we have some different languages in here, but when you hear, first hear the word attitude, what comes to your mind when you hear attitude? What's, what do you think about when you hear, the, hear that word attitude? Character, okay. That could be a part of your attitude. Anybody else? Attitude. Your demeanor, how you, how you carry yourself. That would be part of your attitude. Anybody else? How you act. How you act. Okay, that, that comes out of you. Okay, which we're going to talk about. So yes, when you look this up in the exhaustive concordance, here's what it says the word attitude means. Attitude means a way of thinking. Okay, how you view something. So a way of thinking. So what this is saying to us is, and specifically in the context, if we don't have time to do it today, but if you would go back and study this chapter in the book of Philippians, you would see it's in context of, of them being encouraged by the writer to prefer one another, to serve one another. Okay, and, and so this is the context that we're reading. It's written to the church that they would... Uh, prefer one another. And so in here it's saying, here's how you do it. Okay, here's how you prefer one another. Here's how you serve one another. Look at how Jesus served us. Okay, he is our example, amen? amen. Okay, he is the example that we, we are to follow and to live by. He is our Lord and our King and our Savior. He is the model. And so as we look at his life, it says, have the same attitude. Have the same attitude, which means have the same way of thinking, which is going to guide how we prefer one another. And I would say it this way. Attitude is so very, very, very important. Okay. Because attitude truly shapes the decisions that we make in life. Okay. Attitude shapes the decisions that we make in life. Okay, that's why they're so important. One of you said, I think, I think it was Julie Paul, she said the, the actions. And it, it is, it's part of that. It, they do go together because attitude leads to actions. Okay? And again, there's a lot we don't have time to go into today. But many times we just look at the actions when God's really wanting to get to the attitude. Okay? God's really wanting to search our heart. He's wanting to search the motive. He's wanting to get to the attitude with which we're living our life and carrying ourselves. Why that is so important is because it is what causes and influences our decisions. Do you guys hear that this morning? Do you see that? It's what influences our decisions. So with this understanding that our attitude is important in deciding how we live life, 
Okay, let's look at this passage again and identify some of the traits, some of the characteristics. So look at verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we want to look at some of the traits, the characteristics that we see that make up Christ's actions, that make up Christ's attitude. Okay, and there's, some, there's three specifically that I, I, I think are important, but then you might find more than I did. So let's look at it again and, and look at the passage and let's read it and see what we find here that makes up Jesus' attitude, okay, character traits. What do you guys see when you read this? Lost my place for a minute. What do you see? In verse 6, it says, Who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Okay. So, he knew that he has an equal right with the Father, but right. he gave up his right, and he did not use it for his advantage. Actually, he just gave it up. Amen. Willingly. 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 willingly he gave it up he didn't grab on to it it says you read it he didn't hold on to it but he willingly did that what's one of the the words there that it uses my translation says emptied do you guys have that same word empty what a powerful word he emptied himself now the definition of that word emptied one of the definitions when you think of empty is it, it's just void of any substance it's empty it's completely gone okay and so Jesus this is what it says he emptied himself he left heaven some old timers would say he laid down heaven and he came to earth praise God for that what a servant and again we're looking at his servant heart what else do you see here besides his emptying and not grabbing on to yes he humbled himself great with great humiliation again we're not talking about class we're not we're not talking about that this God creator, this Jesus Christ, this Son of God who is in heaven, leaving heaven and coming to earth as a king living in a high palace. Okay, We're talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords clothing himself in a human body, becoming a baby, being in a lady's womb. Part of the Godhead, one of the members of the Godhead, laying down heaven and coming and being in, a, in Mary's womb and being born as a baby and submitting himself to everything that that was. Human. All God and all man at the same time. Do you see the sacrifice that he made this morning? Do you see this? It's very, very important. What else do we see here? He what? He was obedient, okay? He was very obedient. He obeyed the Father. Okay, to, to go to the cross. There's one other thing in here I would like to point to. You guys have looked at some very, very good things. What's that? He did the form of a servant. Yes, yes. He took the form of a servant. In fact, it goes on to say a bond servant, which a bond servant was one that was, is one that's devoted to another to the disregard of your own self. It's completely giving yourself over to another. Jesus completely gave himself over to the will of God, and he completely gave himself over to humanity. He came here to die on our behalf so that we could be reconciled. There's a, one picture of a bondservant in the Old Testament. There's more than one picture of bondservants that we see or type in the Bible, but there's one picture of a bondservant, and he was a slave or a servant that once his time was up, once he was done serving, then he could go free. But because he loved working for his master, maybe he liked the environment, maybe it's because he loved his master, he would make a decision, a personal decision, to stay with that, that owner for the rest of his life. And when he did that, he could never stop being a slave again. He could never stop being a servant again, he called a bond servant. And in some, some uh, places it says that they would even take them and put their ear up against a doorpost and, and mark them with a type of earring or something. And they would be marked for life as a servant of the master. Can I tell you today that Jesus left heaven and came to be that kind of bond servant? How many are glad that Jesus did that? Praise God Amen. that God has emptied himself, Jesus emptied himself, that Jesus humbled himself, that Jesus became a bond servant. He became a bond servant. So we could equally then write the attitude that he had was one of humiliation. One of, of uh, you guys said servant, the bond servant, servanthood. And one of emptying. And again, his action was what? 
he laid down his life. Do you guys see this? Praise God. He went to the cross. This is the action. But this is what it took. Even when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, this is the attitude that he had to have. Even in his most trying moment, the attitude he had to have was this right here. This attitude was one of, or this right here, one of humiliation. One of, Father, what did he say? Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. What a Savior. So as disciples, our attitude and therefore our decisions should produce the same thing. This is why we're talking about this today. We should have the attitude of emptying ourselves. Most of us don't like being empty. Okay, We want to be full of stuff. One of humbling ourselves and one of being a bondservant so that we too, we're called just like Jesus, Emmanuel, to lay down our lives. So I can now answer this question today. Okay, Why was I born? By looking at why Jesus was born. He's my model. He's my king. He's my Lord. He's my master. I'm to follow him, right? And he's the example of how I'm to live. And we see, for, see him here in the book, how he lived. He didn't come, the Bible says, to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So we're called to be the same way. We're called to live the same way. We are called to lay our lives down for others. Okay? And here's how. This isn't all of it. But this is important. This is what the scripture we're looking at today says. An emptying, a serving, a giving up of ourselves. So now, I'd like for you to take some time. Here's what I want us to do, okay? I want us to take some time to think about not only how Christ lived, but how you and I are called to live. We've talked about it some. And what I want to do is I'm going to give you just a little bit of time. I'm going to ask you two guys to pair up. I'm going to ask you two ladies to pair up. And I'm going to give you, say, five to six minutes, and I want you to reflect together. This is something we're going to talk about together. Talk about these, these characteristics of Christ, and I specifically want you to share your heart with one another on where you feel like it, that possibly you fall short. We all fall short, right? We all do. We can all do better. But we're, even as I've been speaking, that you really feel the prompting. You know what? I'm not quite living like that. But I want to. How many want to? Okay. Well, let's just break up into groups. Okay. Two guys, two girls. And I want you to take just a few minutes. And I'll let you know when the time is done. And share about these characteristics. And at the end, we're going to pray for each other. But talk to one another about what you see here and, uh, and what you want to see in your own life. Can we do that? Okay. So let's get together. And just begin to share with one another what you see here in the passage. Just share your heart. Doesn't have to be real formal. John Ray, I'm sorry you're not feeling well today. It's okay, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. I would encourage you guys, not just individual, but to share with one another, okay? Once you get it, thank you.
You guys understand what I was asking for? Yes, sir. Okay, to look at these things that Christ did and compare them to your own heart and just see what, what God would have you do. Okay, good. coming figuring out things here yes good good hmm. okay I know that we could spend a, a long time probably doing this the goal here is that you would just you guys are friends, you live together, and this, this wonderful revelation that Jesus left heaven and came to earth and was born so that he might serve mankind, that he might serve us, is the same call that we have upon our lives and answers this question, why was I born? Well, I was called to serve. I was called to serve others. And so I know that you all have a calling upon your life and it's very important that we encourage each other in that. And so I'm just going to ask uh, that you just pray for each other just a little bit here. Uh, and then we'll close. I've got one more question to ask you. And then we'll, we'll be done. So let's just pray for each other. Encourage one another in the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Do it, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God, we love you so much. Form your attitude in us, God. Help us to walk as you walk, to think as you think, God. To walk in your ways, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, we do thank you today, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the example that you set. God, we thank you, Lord, for the walk that you lived, the death that you died. We thank you for rising again. Lord, we thank you for being born. 
and giving us an example of how we're to live, God, in humiliation and in, with us emptying ourselves, Lord, and as a servant, God. Lord, thank you for these students, God, these disciples that want to live that way and serve others, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen. Now, I just ask one last thing. It's really good to go away from here this morning having a plan to commit to a way that we could possibly encourage one another throughout the week uh, to be like Christ, to, as we read in the passage, to have this attitude in ourselves. How many want to have this attitude? Okay, to have this attitude. So what are some ways this week that you all could encourage each other? What are, where are some places that you can encourage one another? And how could you do it? You've got electronic devices, you've got places. How, how can we encourage one another? What's some ideas? By reminding them about the paperwork and homework. Okay, reminding them, talking to them, encouraging them. Okay, as you see them, where do you see them at? In the hallway. In the house, in the hallway. Okay, doing that. Okay, what's that? Praying with each other. Okay, praying with each other. Let this not be the only time that we pray about this, but as you see one another, uh, even if you want to use some electronics, okay, just remind each other. That's not a bad idea. Uh, remind each other to say, hey, how you doing today in having Christ's attitude and how you're living? That might not be a bad thing either, amen? Mm -hmm. So could we commit then and then follow through with, and then we'll talk about it again when I see you the next time? how we're doing on encouraging one another in this, this living and possessing an attitude just like Jesus. Can we do that? Okay, amen. Well, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a great day. Okay.